Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronis with it and natural and in this tutorial I'll show you guys the best Gaussian blur radius for better details and better skin texture in your images. So I've been getting so many questions from you guys in the comment section and maybe on my Instagram about the best radius and which radius to apply on which photos for the best details in the skin in Photoshop during frequency separation. So this tutorial is for you guys that have been asking me about that particular topic. So let's kick in and we start understanding about frequency separation or skin retouching. Skin retouching is more about evening out the skin tones in a particular image. So for example, this very image, you want to even out the skin tones, but when doing skin retouching, we have to make sure we don't go overboard and we retain uh, these details you can see in the skin texture of the model so i've not yet removed the blemishes from this very image because i want to show you guys the unretouched version so that you can understand each and every process for retaining or applying the right gaussian blur radius for all the images you'll be uh, retouching in photoshop so let's kick in i think i've done enough of the talking so first of all, frequency separation is going to divide this image into two, that is uh, the color and the texture, so that we can work non-destructively on the colors and the textures, so that when you combine both layers, you're going to be able to get back the original image that is looking better and has the textures and unified skin tones uh, after, after all you have retouched. So you're going to create those two layers by hitting Ctrl or Command J because I want you guys to understand each and every single detail about how we come up with this radius to retain the skin textures. So since uh, we all know what frequency separation, I, I can assume because I have so many tutorials about skin retouching using frequency separation, I'm going to name this layer low and I'm going to name this high. So under the low frequency, we have the colors and under the high the low frequency we have the colors and the high frequency we have the textures. So we want to retain these textures and now remember as you're blurring out or removing these uh, textures from the low frequency layer, it has to be depicted or reflected in uh, the high frequency layer that is containing the textures. I don't know if you get that but let me show you guys what I'm trying to mean by this. I'm going to turn off the high frequency layer and I'm going to come to the low frequency layer so this is the major emphasis of this very tutorial so when you select the low frequency layer we usually come to filter then we come to blur and we come to Gaussian blur so this is the point whereby most people tend to cram these digits or this radius information the reason for or the reason as why you shouldn't cram this radius information or the details right here is because different cameras have different uh, megapixels and different cameras are going to capture different details or details in images uh, differently because higher megapixel cameras are going to capture more information or more details than low megapixel cameras that means uh, for high megapixel cameras your Gaussian blur radius is going to be slightly higher because you have to blur out that more exposed details in the images and for images that have less details or lower megapixels you have to use a lower radius because you have less details to blur out or get rid of from the images i hope i've made sense with that so for this case you have to look and analyze your image that's why we have this a uh, tiny dialog box right here and it always has to have this preview so that you can see the effect in real time. So I'm going to uh, use this zoom out tool and look for the area that has more textures. You have to click and move or hover around the image and look for the that area or that sweet spot that has more details or more textures uh, than the rest of the image. So for this case, we are just going to go with this particular area. So how we choose this radius, we choose it in a way that we have this area selected, 
then we start moving this radius towards the right hand side so you click on this tiny uh, pointer right here hold down and start moving so you have to move it slowly and gradually so just move it slowly as you're looking at the preview right here so just move so don't pay attention to the image just look at this area that has more details than the rest of uh, the image for this case so just keep on moving slightly as you're looking at the preview so just move it slightly just like that i think you just move it up to that sweet point when you are losing out on the details or texture so like for this case uh, you can you can actually not notice any textures in this very image because we have blurred them out or we have removed them so what you do here is going to determine the amount of textures that you're going to be with or retain in the high frequency layer so it's like we are removing th these textures from the image and you're going to store them in a given area and later on when we come to the high frequency layer, we, we are going to steal those textures from where we stored them after maybe subtracting them from this layer and we apply them to the high frequency layer so after you have chosen the radius so you shouldn't cram this radius just move it up to that point when you are losing out on the details or the skin details in the image and after you have chosen that come and hit ok so you shouldn't cram this radius i'm going to overemphasize this don't cram these figures or this radius and after you, are, you have done so come and hit ok so when you hit ok your image is going to look a little bit blurry because you're not going to be seeing any details or any information in the skin but you can still notice that these are the eyes and the facial structures in the image so which is a good point so we are now going to come to the high frequency layer and here you have to notice or you have to note that uh, we have different images have different bit ratios we have 8 bit images 16 bit images and 32 bit images that's that is as far as i can get to so since i have a 16 bit image you have to come right here and in order to see the bit ratio if at all you don't have this digit right here simply come to image and come to mode and you can see the bit channel or the bit ratio of your image so my image is a 16 bit image so i'm going to be applying the 16 bit frequency separation settings for this very image so i'm going to activate the high frequency layer and i'm going to get back the details as you can notice right here now what i'm going to do i'm going to come to image and i'm going to come to apply image so when i come to apply image it is going to bring this little dialog box right here so remember the layer that stored our textures was the low frequency layer so when you come to this layer option always and always come and select that layer that stored our textures that we eliminated from it so come and select the low frequency layer and when you select it we have the channel which is rgb that is the default for photoshop applications or softwares so what we are going to be doing we have to choose a blending mode so that blend, blending mode has to reveal the texture separate in the overall image so if at all for example you have an 8-bit image you're going to be choosing a blending mode of subtract and make sure the opacity is 100 preserve transparency is not checked and the mask is also not checked the scale is 2 and offset 128 the reason for this is because we want our textures to be on this 50 percent gray kind of layer and we don't want any colors embedded in this layer so after doing that you can simply hit ok make sure that the invert option is not on before you can even hit ok to approve the settings but since we are dealing with a 16-bit image you're going to select the low frequency layer and change the blending mode from subtract to add opacity at 100 
preserve transparency and mask are not, also not checked still. And now come to the scale. We are going to be using a scale of 2 and offset of 0 for this particular image. And when we are done doing that, unlike the 8-bit image, for a 16-bit image, we always have to check the invert option. And the blending mode is add and the scale is 2 and this time around offset 0. Always and always make sure that your preview is on and simply hit OK, just like that. So after doing that, come to the blending mode and change it from normal because we want to reveal back the image the way it was initially before. So come and change it from normal and change it to linear light and you get back the information in the image the way it was before. So we want to see if at all we were able to retain the details in this very image and in order to retain these details, you also have to notice or ensure that you set up whichever tool you're going to be using for using frequency separation. So I'm going to put these two in a group by selecting both and hitting Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. So Command G on the keyboard, put them in a group and I'm going to name that uh, frequency separation just like that. So for those that have been seeing or watching my tutorials, I usually create a black and white layer inside of my frequency separation group. So for this case, I'm not going to be, let me just do that for purposes of you guys understanding. So come and select the high frequency layer and now come and create a black and white layer. So this layer is going to be like uh, a guide for us to show us the uneven skin tones so that we can blend them or mix them and harmonize them to retain the skin textures in the images. So we're just going to come to the red channel and slightly click and darken it. So when you start darkening it, you're going to start noticing or looking at those areas that have those areas that don't have even skin tone transitions and we are going to be using a mixer brush tool to even them out. So come and select your mixer brush tool under the brushes and for those that don't have it, just right click on this option. For the settings, you're going to be using a clean brush and always and always make sure that you select the second option because we want Photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us after each and every stroke. You're going to come to the wetness and select a wetness of 9%, load 75, mix at 90 and the flow at 100% and come and select that layer that contains the skin tones in this particular image remember we want to blend the colors or the skin tones in this particular portrait so increase on the size of the mixer brush tool and start evening out the skin tones of this very image so just come and even them out and as you're doing this make sure you even out the highlights alone the mid-tones alone and the shadows alone and in order to increase on the size of your brush or mixer brush tool, you can simply use the brackets right after the P key on the keyboard to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool. So you can see we have just blended right on the forehead of the model. And I want to show you guys the details uh, that we have been able to retain in this particular image. So turn off the black and white and I'm just going to slightly zoom in. So that you can see the effect, you can see the before, after, before and after. We still have the details in the skin and every single detail or power on the model skin has been left intact and it looks as natural as possible. And for those, people that, for those that don't use the mixer brush tool and they use the lasso tool method, here is where you have to pay maximum attention. So just come and get your usual tool, that is the lasso tool, and set up the feathering. I don't know the one you use, but I prefer to advise you guys to use a feathering of 22 pixels. And now come and make a selection on the skin area. So just make that selection just like that. So only select the skin area and you have to keep away from the details in the face or the eyes of the model. So simply come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian Blur. So in order you, to retain these details or the details in this very image, you can see that this is the radius we applied to this portrait when we are trying to 
create African separation uh, group for this very image or when we are dividing the frequencies of the image into the textures and the colors. So this is the radius we had initially before. So when you look at this radius, I have a cheat code for you guys, but before I can share it with you guys, I'm going to come to the radius. So come and click on it and now start moving this radius uh, towards uh, the right hand side. So remember we had a radius of eight, so we are now in 14. So you have to move as you look at, at the details in the image. So just move it. I think at around 24 we have a fine details and the skin texture is really looking nice. So keep on applying that onto the overall image and for uh, the cheat code I was sharing with you guys, I'm just going to go back to 8. Remember we had applied 24 when we had, uh, we had gotten our nice radius at 24. So for this radius uh, that you had initially before, if at all you multiply whichever radius you had used for your frequency separation group or when you're playing your action of frequency separation, just when you reach on this step, multiply that radius by 3 and I guarantee that you guys are going to be having the best skin details for your image. If at all you have followed the steps I've been uh, focusing on in this very tutorial. So when you, we multiply 8 by 3, we get 24. So I'm just going to delete 8 and I'm just going to come and type in 24. And you can see we have the nice skin texture for this particular image and simply hit OK. So you can come and apply it onto the rest of the image. So I'm just going to come and show you guys. So simply right click, rather right click and come to a Gaussian blur and you can see it is really applying the nice effect and the details in the skin are still left intact. So this is all for today's story and you can continue retouching and practicing uh, using the information I've been able to give you guys in this very tutorial. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and this video has been about the best Gaussian blur radius to retain the most natural skin details or skin texture in your images. And if at all you love this story, don't forget to give this video a like or a thumbs up because it is going to help me or help this video rank highly on the YouTube channel or YouTube feed or algorithm. Ronix from Ronix Photography and I'll see you in yet more tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.